All right, so that leads us to the analysis portion, which is we're going to create a new tab, i.e. use one of our pre-existing tabs, and we're going to label it analysis. And then we're going to type the following questions and then answer them. So I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy and paste all of them in and, and hope for the best. Oops, that won't work. All right, hold on one second. Hold on. All right, so I, I forgot to double click down here anyway. So hold on, let me double click. Double click, analysis. All right, so I believe the instructions are, let me double check this real quickly. Um, type the following questions and then answer each in complete sentences showing calculations. And again, this might be, you have two options. You can type, you can type one point, what are the types of data you are collecting in step one? Question mark. Okay, so you can type it there, like you could make it um, regular and then put your answer in bold. You know, I was collecting, um, for example, types of data would be um, qualitative, quantitative, discrete, quantitative, continuous, and here's a hint, um, you were collecting actually several types. So think about that. There's more than one answer you have to answer for all of the things you were collecting. So blah, blah, blah. So you could do it this way and then, you know, skip and then do two and then type that question, right? So that'll work. Um, you'll be writing over cells. So some people like that, some people don't. If you don't want to do it that way, you can go to insert, choose a text box, and kind of make yourself a little box and type, you know, question right here. Number one, what are the types? Oh my gosh, if I could type of data you are collecting in step one and then blah 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 okay so and then you could do it again you could type it all in here actually you could you know make this a huge text box and do number one number two and number three or you could have a different text box for each problem you know it's all up to you so whatever you want to do to make it neat remember you always want to make it very easy and clear for your instructor to follow Okay. And again, just a little hint to you, you were collecting more than one type of data there. Okay, so what are the levels of measurement? Same deal as before. Um, my hint for number one stands there. Variable is independent. What variable is a dependent? What's the y-intercept and the slope? Well, remember when you made your equation show up on the screen right in there, this little box is giving you all sorts of information. Just a little hint to you. Um, suppose there are cities that are 3,000 miles away, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're going to use that equation, that same equation for this problem, this problem, most of these problems, right? Um, so a lot of that, a lot of these problems are using that equation that you cut, that you found with the trend line feature to answer all these questions. You know, substituting in different values and such. Now for number nine, just um, that how do you use Excel to calculate the price per mile? Well, that's a wonderful question. So if I go back here, I can kind of move this out of the way a little bit. So the price per mile right, is how much it costs for each mile, right? So price, remember per means division. So you're going to equal that price in cell D2 divide by that mileage, not the 1216. You want to do it by the total distance and press enter. And then you can click and drag down, right, and find it per city. Okay, that's how you're going to answer that. And then there are a bunch of questions about that. What was the best value, the worst value, and so on. Which your data points is furthest from your model. That's going to be um, judgment calls that you can make from looking at the equations. There are other ways to do that too. There might even be a relationship with the price per mile. Who knows? So look those over. Um, which of the data points are the best based on their information, etc. Just on a side note, if you wanted to figure out your correlation coefficient, notice that this doesn't give it to you. So if you want to find R, for example, the correlation coefficient, you type equals SQRT, that's the square root of that number, 0 0.8935. There it is for this particular problem. Notice if this was negative, you'd have to add the negative yourself, but this is actually a positive one that I'm doing here. All right, then you would save it when you're all done and email it to your instructor. So make sure to save often and save, save frequently, save often and have a good time.